at this year's Climate Action Our Ocean Conference, over 400 commitments were valued at about 16 billion US dollars, which was made by a number of countries to protect the ocean and, of course, deal with the issue of climate crises. Our next guest was one of those 30 leaders selected from 490 applications to attend and speak at the Our Ocean Conference. Uh, he is a current AUT PhD candidate focusing on Pacific Island coastal reef fisheries and is also the co-founder of a new NGO, Te Ngarutu Ong Nukuroa, aiming to improve environmental conservation and boost rehabilitation efforts. So with that, I say kia orana and welcome to Our Ocean 2022 Pacific Youth Delegate, Anthony Vavia. Welcome to the show. Hey. Kirana, good morning, good morning. Yeah. Anthony, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us this morning. I do know the time difference is already uh, what you're having to contend with, so we thank you that you've been able to wake up this early and be with us. But, man, I would love to know just your overall experience uh, at the conference. How was it for you? Yeah, well, um, I'll tell you, not just for myself, but it's an extremely busy week for everyone um, with so many plenary sessions and side events to attend to. Um, but even in just the lead up, even just traveling here has been quite a mission with all the uh, COVID regulations mm. that you have to meet for the countries. Um, but the conference itself, um, honestly, in the lead up, I wasn't really looking forward to it mm. um, because usually these these things are just exhausting and this one was <laughs> exhausting. Um, but no, I'm, I'm really glad I came. I'm mm. really glad I came. Um, the networking is real. The networking is yeah. real. Uh, the problems are still the same. Nothing's changing um, on a global scale. Um, but you can see that there are people making moves to try and do some really good things. Mm. And, and, and that's been the best part has been um, getting to know those people uh, behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And so, of course, you know, we spoke to um, uh, Alberto Williams, Minister for Pacific Peoples, earlier in the show today, and of course, how he was representing Aotearoa. But you, as a Pacific Youth Delegate, you had the opportunity, right, to be a speaker on Indigenous-led conservation. That panel itself. What issues did you feel were important for you to actually bring to the attention of the conference? Mm. Yeah. So I was quite a um nervous with that whole thing because well i was surprised i got selected in the first place i didn't realize how big um being invited to join a one of the main panel sessions was yeah. um the thing that i was sort of the angle that i came from or they're hoping that i would direct my conversation out was um me being at the nexus between mm. um a student of you know Western science, but also having a, a good immersion in um, a space where traditional ecological knowledge is heavy back home in Mitiaro. Mm. And so I thought, okay, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to talk on that because there's so much conversation about one versus the other, um, but I'm actually a huge advocate for both of them. Um, I don't select one over the other because uh, especially with a rapidly evolving world, we don't have time to just cut out information. And, and that's basically what they are. One, they're both forms of information. Um, you'd be pretty ignorant um, and arrogant if you're, you're thinking that one is not important, um, but mm. they both support each other in a way if we can take the time to bring those together. So that's what I wanted to point out. Mm. I thought it was the elephant in the room um, <laughs> at the time. So <laughs> during my talk, I thought, you know, I'm just going to do it, yeah. potentially stir the pot. Um, you're not going to please everyone, but um, yeah, that's what I wanted to, to bring bring up. That's great. And look, having to uh, highlight the elephant in the room is sometimes the very thing that people need to hear. So I'm thinking even with the commitment that Aotearoa had made, you know, to the conference and the partnership, are you happy with that? Were you happy with what Aotearoa was representing? Yeah, so I, I watched that. And honestly, from just my experience and stuff i i don't know i i, I can't mm. i can't comment too much I, i'm just the scientist uh whereas when we're coming to these sort of oh, it's part of the reason why i do come to these sort of things is to learn more uh beyond um the science because even just in our delegation you've got people um you got people in well science then you've got science communication you've got policy you've got maritime security you've got mm 
bluish and economy and all these things. And so when it comes to things like economy and, and uh, commitments and things like that, I'm, I'm quite um, ignorant to see how, you know, knowing how that all works. Um, so yeah, I, I can't comment too much on, right. on, on that, sorry. I mean, yeah. if, if not being able to comment on, is you certainly something where you're expecting more? Because of course, you know, your background is that you are an AUT PhD, right? You're, you, uh, you focus on Pacific Island coastal reef fisheries. So what sort of support are you expecting in maybe that arena? Oh, yeah, I, I think um, more, more um, capacity building programs or support. Mm. especially for people um, in the Pacific or Pacifica people in New Zealand, of course, um, that are wanting to get into that space um, because there, there's, well, well, there's not many of us mm. um, at all. But, you know, I, I think that comes down to two things. The one, um, the lack of support, or two, the one that no one talks about is that people just don't want to get into that space. Mm. Um, and then that can be broken down to other factors like... Um, them not even knowing about it in the first place. So yeah, I, I guess right. that can come down into the support unit too, mm -hmm. um, to try and encourage uh, more people exploring things um, needed back at home, like stuff based around the ocean, whether that be fisheries or climate change yeah. or waste management, or um, at the moment in the, in the Cook's seabed mining, all these things, um, they need to be spoken about and perhaps with more support around that, mm -hmm. um, we can start tapping into these areas. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, Anthony, uh, sorry, if you're tuning in, we are speaking with our Oceans 2022 Pacific Youth Delegate, Anthony Vavia. Anthony, I'd like to know, though, what are you hoping, though, to see happen moving forward from this actual conference? Yeah, so like I was saying before, I think the, um, the, the real engagement doesn't really happen up on the stage. Mm. The engagement happens behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so all the networking, all the questions, all the really hard conversations are happening um, off stage. And I'm hoping that from that, there are some good networking opportunities being passed around. Mm. And obviously with, with networking opportunities, um, there's potential support for ideas to implement in places like the Pacific. Mm. Um, they can help with the issues that we're facing because um, I think one of the common challenges that we have in the Pacific and you know let's be honest is yeah. uh, things like funding mm. um, there was very little funding for that sort of stuff e even in, in my line of work um, looking at coastal reef fisheries there's no money involved with that so oh. scientists don't you know marine biologists don't go do it because there's no funding for it it doesn't produce much mm. or mm. anything um, so even even in other areas, especially in the Pacific, it would be um, good to have yeah. um, either knowledge transfer um, or program transfers or funding transfers going on, um, some solid some solid um, partnerships going on between NGOs yeah. um, or even between governments to help develop infrastructure to improve mm. um, our marine environment throughout. Nice. Yeah, that would be that would be really good rather than just yep yep and talk about it <laughs> actually get it done that'd be pretty good absolutely it's obviously walking the talk right and i think anthony when you being a youth delegate you know you are the next generation you are the generations really to really see hopefully the change that we're wanting in regards to climate action but any sort of while you were there uh, any sort of standout moments any speeches that sort of spoke to you and thought yeah look we are actually on the path to something to, to change Oh, yeah. No, we spoke about this um, several times within our youth delegation. Um, and I think just as an observer from myself, um, there's a lot of energy through the youth. There's mm. so much energy through the youth. Um, I, I, I honestly just came here for the conference <laughs> and nothing about um, pushing youth mm. forward, but um, still being here, no, they um, they made me realise though there's there's a lot of uh, support and a lot of drive for them to uh, want to get youth voices out there, mm. and I, I think one of the things that's um, quite inspiring about that is the reality is that yeah the our, our young people are the the next gen the ones that are picking up these challenges, yeah. um, 
but I think what I think it's almost um, not divisive. Divisive isn't the word, mm. but I'm, I'm hoping that for any youth globally, globally, um, that if they're getting into the space to um, take the time to um, work with mentors or existing leaders in the space, yeah. learn from those mistakes, but also learn from their successes in that way, um, trying to develop or transform new ways to mm. uh, better tackle these um, ongoing issues. Yeah. So I think that's one of the biggest takeaways is the youth drive to um, to just grow and want to do better and that they should start yesterday rather than <laughs> rather yes. than tomorrow yeah, um, yeah which is really cool so mm. um yeah that's, that's been a takeaway for, for me really nice um as we wrap up and time is upon us sorry um anthony but i do really want to ask then is there maybe a key or final message that you'd like to leave with our community of listeners uh, as pacific people so that we can actually you know be part of the solution yeah um well, Five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> last minute advice. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think it's just that um, everyone's got a part to play. You know, we we all love our our waters, um, and it's just a matter of everyone, um, <laughs> yeah, taking part and looking after hmm. uh, this resource that we we love hmm. and that our, our families rely on. And back at home, you know, um, so it's just about having this mutual respect for. For the ocean that we have, uh, yeah, I um, encourage all of our people to take that into consideration, and um, yeah, love it. Hey, look, <laughs> not that motivational, <laughs> but. It, no, it is obviously, you know, your heart. And of course, we understand, you know, the passion that you already have in this space. And the mere fact that, again, like you said, you got picked to be able to be part of that panel means something. So again, we just want to say, uh, Fafitai Lava, thank you so much for your time this morning. Uh, and just hope, hey, you get home safely soon. Yeah, let's hope so. <laughs> no, thank you very much. Meta <laughs> That is all right. That